Uh, joining us now by phone, Charles Koppelman. He's the CEO of CAK uh, Entertainment with five plus decades uh, of experience in music and retail. He's worked with legendary entertainers such as Michael Jackson, Jennifer Lopez, Barbara Streisand and many more. And he's the former chairman of Martha Stewart Living Omnimedia. Very good afternoon to you, Charles. Thanks so much for joining us. My pleasure. How are you doing? Well, very well, thank you. Very well indeed. So, Charles, first question, big picture. What, what exactly is in dispute here? You have publishing rights, you have the original recordings. What, what, what are the two sides well, I fighting think over the, here? I, I think the last statement that uh, was read where, where they backed off the fact that they're going to prohibit it, they don't really have the right to prohibit her singing the song on the American Music Awards. Um, the music publisher always has a right, but she controls that, so there is no issue there. Uh, they're... They're trying to block her from singing on a show under the guise of that it's a re-recording -record, re of a master that they own. It's just not the case. So I think they are wrong, but I think I just heard you say that they've backed off of that. Um, it, it's pretty clear, and it's also not really a fight. You know, it, it's a fight between, between a superstar who, who speaks for a generation and a record company uh, that no longer has her under contract. And, and either way, though, next year, am I right in saying, Charles, that she has the right to re-record it anyway? Yes, I think it's either a year or a year and a half that she has the right to re-record all, all of her old songs. Uh, so it's so really what is a it ultimately a dispute, a dispute is, that is makes 12 no months worth? Say that again? It's just, uh, so it's only a year's worth of dispute uh, anyway? Yeah, but it's not, but the record company really doesn't have a right to stop the, the singing of a song on television. They don't even have to get permission to do that. The, the AMAs ah. don't need permission from the record company. They do need permission from the music publisher, which, of course, they get. And it's also ridiculous because if she sings the songs on the AMA, it only enhances uh, uh, Big Machine's music that they already own. Charles, I... I it, it, it's, um, it definitely seems to be like a bit of a nuanced and kind of short-term uh, battle that's playing out here. But I think it also gets at kind of where all the money lies in the music industry, especially probably now more than ever, and that is publishing. Uh, so I guess how does this fit into that broader picture around publishing for a superstar like Taylor Swift? And I guess how does it compare to other fights we've seen over the years? I mean, I think back to, like, Michael Jackson and... Paul McCartney, for example, although that was more of a publishing catalog beef that played out over a couple of decades. Well, publishing has always been the real wealth of the music business. It's kind of analogous to real estate. You own a song to the exclusion of everyone else in the world, and anybody that wants to use that song has to pay you. Today, more than ever, with streaming, with music being bigger than ever on a global basis, if you're the owner of the music publishing or the writer, uh, you're making a lot of money. I would almost say that Taylor Swift probably makes as much money or has made as Big Machine has. So it's not a David and Goliath, you know, it's a Taylor and Big Machine. But I think they've backed off it because actually they were wrong in, in, in insinuating that they could stop her from singing the song on the AMAs.